what we want to look at here is the gradient tool, the gradient tool. And uh, the first couple of things that we need <clears throat> is first the color palette, which I already have on my screen here. I would like you to bring up the swatches palette. Again, we do that by going under window for all of our little palettes. Bring up swatches. Bring that right over here. And then I want to again go back up here and get the gradient, the gradient. Okay. And with the gradient, um, I want to make it a little bit bigger. And so like most uh, larger typical windows, in this lower right corner here of the gradient palette right here, I can pull it out and make that a little bit bigger. So I've done that just to make it a little bit easier to see. And then I'm going to create a shape on my screen. And um, there we have it. Um, uh, now let's talk about adding a gradient to this. First thing we want to look at um, is right here in the swatches palette, I want to differentiate some things here. <clears throat> Notice that we have a, a bunch of colors. We also have uh, several gradients and we have some textures. Um, the swatches palette breaks down into those um, three different main categories and then there's a new thing called color palettes or groups. And the point here is that this is a lot of information to look at all at once. And I'm going to suggest to you that right here from the left is the second icon. It shows the different ways we can look at this menu. Um, and notice here when I pull down all swatches, color swatches, gradients, patterns, and color groups. And what we want is to simplify it and show just the gradients. Just the gradients, okay? And you can see there's only a couple of them um, visible, and that's fine. We're going to start from there. So again, we go right down here to the second little icon, and we can vary what we see in the swatches palette. Okay, um, the first thing I want to do is I generally suggest to students that we start start by using one of the existing gradients. It's It just makes it easier because you'll notice this is defaulted to black and white and sometimes it can just be a little bit cumbersome in my experience to add the color whereas if we just start by adding color quickly then we can modify it and change it. So I'm going to click this existing uh, gradient right here <clears throat> and there we have it and uh, we've got color in our shape um, if you didn't get color in your shape then you didn't have it activated so click on it with one of the um, um, arrow tools se selection tools and then click the little swatch here so let's uh, take a look at our palette a little bit closer <clears throat> First off, these are what we call the paint buckets, or I call them paint buckets. And when you want to change the gradient, you click on a paint bucket and you can go and get a different color. And we can do that as much as we want. By simply clicking on these little paint buckets, we can change the color. Okay? We can remove the paint buckets, the existing color paint buckets, by clicking, holding our mouse, and pulling it straight down. And you see it disappears that simply. Okay? We can add paint buckets by clicking our mouse anywhere underneath this bar where the other paint buckets are. Just click and pick a color and it's that simple. Okay? We um, can vary how the color looks in the um, gradient uh, a couple of different ways. One is we can slide the little paint buckets left and right, and that's going to vary it quite a bit. Okay. 
And then notice that on the top, on the top of the bar, there's one of these little diamonds. For every pair of paint buckets, there's a diamond. And the diamond indicates where one color stops and the other color starts, or where they meet. So by sliding the little diamond back and forth, <coughs> it, we can also vary it in a somewhat different way. So sliding the paint buckets and sliding the diamonds are the ways that we can vary the color within the gradient. Okay? And um, then uh, we can make uh, this gradient. We can make this gradient. And I just realized something. Here we go. We can make this gradient change from what it is now called linear to circular or radial. And that is this button right here. Um, you may uh, have seen or not uh, caught what I did a minute ago. I realized my palette, there are, most of the palettes, you have a couple of different variations in how they may look. And it expands them to have more tools or to be uh, more simple. And so this little arrow on almost all the tabs, they have this little arrow right here right in front of the name. And by clicking this, we can get a couple of different variations on how the tool, or in this case, the gradient, looks. And so um, I've expanded it uh, considerably, and I can change it from radial to linear. OK? And um, as I generally tell students, if you create kind of a neat looking gradient, and even if you're not sure you want to use it, the way you capture colors or you capture a gradient and uh, keep it is to simply, in this case, come right over here to the little sample and simply click and drag it over to the swatches and drop it, and there it is. And it will stay in your file uh, permanently. Okay? So, um, that's how we can make them, and then uh, that is how we can capture them. Then, um, the really, the on, only other piece of this little puzzle is how do we apply the gradient? Now, um, when I click and hold my mouse, you'll see, oops, I'm sorry. Uh, let me go to the gradient. Uh, by the way, the gradient tool is right down here, right down there, above the little dropper. So I can grab that or select that. And when I am holding my mouse down, notice we have this black line. This black line from one end to the other represents the entire gradient. In this case, from yellow on the left to the blue on the right. And um, by changing where I start and stop, and in what direction I push or pull this tool, that will in fact dictate how the gradient falls within my shape. Okay? For instance, if I start like I just did here and go only halfway, that means the dark blue will come right to the middle and the rest of it will be blue, as it is. You can see that. If I want it to start in, uh, be primarily red and blue, I'd start way out here, because this is where the yellow will start. And by the time I get into the middle of my shape, I'm already in the middle of the, the gradient. Remember, this entire black line represents the complete gradient. And so there you have it. So where I start, where I stop, how far I pull it, and in what direction are the ways that we can alter and affect how the gradient fills our various shapes.